of drugs in it. And so then, it's got a microwave. We're golden. It used to be actually like someone stayed here. It looks like there's a stove. Sorry, I didn't mean to bug you. Do what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Some dude about? in there. <laughs> Sorry to bother you. Sorry, man. No, he's just being a butthead. <laughs> Chip size is like I just want an elk with a big old frame on him, so that's what we're after. This one, we're gonna let walk. It's just just getting started here. Evening number two, Muscular. Let's go see what else we can find. Hey, thanks for joining us here on The Fierce Life. I'm your host, John Mobile. We are now starting our sixth year of TV, three years with Hunting Illustrated TV, and now our third year with The Fierce Life, so we wanted to thank you for your support. Also here at Fierce Firearms in Rosina, USA, we've been experiencing some great growth, and once again, that's because of you, our supporters, and our customers, and we wanted to thank you. As you can see, we're just starting a new facility here in Utah, and it's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna help us continue to grow and we wanted to show you as that progresses. We're gonna have a fantastic thousand yard shooting range outside the back of our building, as well as a little sporting clay uh, facility where we can shoot the, the over under Rosini sporting clay shotguns. So that's gonna to continue to aid us in our growth. One of the things we like to do here in The Fierce Life is go out and hunt ourselves and show you our rifles and our shotguns at work but also we like to go out and join our customers. And that's what we have today. We've got one of our good customers, Mark Taylor of North Dakota, drew a fantastic sheep tag and he called us and said, hey, would you like to join me for this hunt? And of course we said yes. So that's what we've got for you today. We're gonna to join up with Mark Taylor as he's shooting his fierce edge. Stay with us. Well, uh, we're down in this really awesome canyon um, we're kind of on a it, it is a road but it ain't much of a road and um, about to cross this river right here and hopefully we don't get stuck but I'm pretty sure we won't I got a winch if we do get stuck so. <laughs> we'll find out we'll find out Is that what they did? That hole was pretty deep. Yeah, that's why I didn't drive off into it. But some tracks over there or something, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the look of that. Look at it coming back over here. We, can't, we, uh, we don't want to risk it. We're in a really remote spot. And um, if we were to get stuck out here or whatever, it would be. It'll be bad. It's supposed to be, it'll be 10 degrees here tonight, so we don't want to get stuck out here. So we'll turn around. We'll come out of a different direction. There's like nine miles of country with no roads in it through this canyon. And I just wanted to get in there a little deeper where we could see some stuff that no one ever looks at, but not going to happen today. At least not this way. Go afoot maybe later. Get some waders. <laughs> I uh, came in here today hoping to go down this canyon a little farther, but. Uh, Roads washed out, and um, the water's just too deep, and some big pools where the road crosses. So we came back here 
and uh, I did a little reconnaissance hike and found a whole bunch of sheep sign or sheep beds and so we're gonna hike back up in there for a little while hunt there this evening it's probably only gonna take us like maybe 30 minutes to get up the mountain and hopefully we can find a big old ram it looks awesome in here so it should be good This segment of The Fierce Life is brought to you by Cryptech, Battlefield to Backcountry. My name's Mark Taylor and uh, I live near Bismarck, North Dakota, actually west of Mandan. I was hunting with uh, Dan Bishop from, uh, what's he call it, Cocobolo Outfitters and uh, did a muzzleloader elk hunt last fall and we got to talking about different species to hunt and he said, well, I should put you in for elk and uh, sheep next year and I'd never applied for a sheep license and uh, got drawn the first time. And I was hunting with him, uh, hunting antelope with him this fall down in uh, near Morarity, New Mexico. And he mentioned fierce firearms, which I hadn't heard of at the time. And uh, so the next week I was in Phoenix, Arizona at a, at a meeting and I had some spare time so I went over to Cabela's and took a look at uh, a fierce firearm uh, and I uh, was really impressed with it so then I called John and talked to him for a while and ended up purchasing a 7LRM and a CT Edge and uh, it's a beautiful rifle, uh, very balanced, lightweight, uh, handles great. I've never handled a rifle that handled like the CT Edge. That's day two. We got a new spot here we moved to. And um, we see a ton of country. It's like giant, massive canyons. So we'll do a bunch of glassing today and hopefully we can, hopefully we can find a really great ram. I know Mark's super excited about hiking to the bottom of this canyon. And <laughs> I'm not a half mountain goat like you. <laughs> So. Well, we'll try and make it as easy as possible, but it's crazy giant country, big old crazy canyon, so. Sheep are living, living up to their legacy, that's yeah. steep. They're living in the rough stuff. But beautiful, beautiful country, great, great, uh, great weather, so. Yeah, we've had great weather, been blessed for that, for sure. Anyways, hopefully soon we're showing you the big ram. Come around an edge here and just glassed up three rams. I gotta go grab these guys and uh, top one looked big, big to me, but I guess we, we need to get a better look. I'm gonna go grab Chip and Mark and uh, we'll head over there and get a better look at them. We're, we came out here, just looked on the map, found like an awesome finger that we could get relatively close to and with the, with the truck and we walked out, got on the point and uh, Devin glassed up a band of rams, three rams. They're probably like, I don't know, probably a little over a mile away. And uh, we can tell that like they're they're good rams. I can't tell you exactly what they are, but we're gonna drive, we can get, we can hike back to the truck and take a road and get relatively decent distance from where we can hike into them within a half hour or so. And hopefully it's a big one and we'll whack them. It'd be awesome. Should be, it could be really awesome. All right, we're, we've uh, driven pretty relatively close to where we saw the rams, like uh, down here in the canyon. And uh, we should be able to walk out on this point above them. And I'm 90% sure we'll be in rifle range. And uh, hopefully it's a big old stud. I think it might be. We've seen a bigger ram in this same area um, this summer and just haven't been able to relocate it. And hopefully this is him. So about to find out.
There's a big mature ram. He looks like he's like a, he could be like a nine year old or 10 year old ram. But the last, probably at least third of his horn is broke off. About a third of it is broke off. The other side, I can't tell, but I, it might be the big sheep that he had on his property. The other two are like, the one might be like, they're probably both in the 160s, like mid to low 160s, I would bet. Two are bedded, one's up, and one's like kind of, I don't think it's looking at us. It might have hurt us or something, but it's looking this way. Two are just chilling. This segment of The Fierce Life is brought to you by Limb Saver, products that work. We're in day three of the hunt. We decided to move over and just take a quick look at another area. Not as optimistic, it's a little lower population area, but uh, we thought we'd give it a shot. Uh, winds up today, completely different. We were hunting in shirt sleeves uh, by noon yesterday, but Looks, looks promising, kind of a neat area. Uh, we're gonna look it over good and uh, see if we can put a plan together.
This segment of The Fierce Life is brought to you by Fierce Firearms. Ferocious performance, deadly accurate. He's dead. At least he's laying a little slow. Another one here. Just in case. I should have waited like five more seconds because I just barely turned the video camera. I just flinched that oh, time. I think he's down that time. Quite a gun too though. I'll tell you what, that rifle made a lot of difference on this hunt. Easy to carry. Accurate. Now the fun begins. <laughs> now the fun begins for all of us. Yeah, if you'd have rolled off that cliff, we would have been mad because I was. It was. It happened quicker than I thought. <laughs> were you Were you running? Oh yeah. Good. Well, we got it down about an hour ago. Thought we had a place to get down right here, and I don't know where Chip is. I don't know where Mark is. He's behind me somewhere, but this is gnarly. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be dark in about a couple minutes, an hour maybe. But uh, I'm a little concerned about how the hell we're going to get this thing out of here. Oh, yeah. We're right, freaking end up spending the night out here. Living the fierce life. <laughs> I said, we're living the fierce life, Mark. <laughs> There's the ram. I see him. Have him face me. Oh yeah. This is as close as we could get. Chip's a goat and he just scaled these cliffs and as you can see we're kinda we're kinda ledged here. We're kinda stuck. It's about dark. Are we nuts? Huh? Are we crazy? <laughs> Tell us what happened. We almost made it up. Well we tried to climb up to where the sheep is. <laughs> Guide's got to be half mountain goat. He got right up there. Did everything we could. We tried a couple different ways and we're not going to make it. It's getting dark. We're going to try and get back down. We got some of the steep stuff to get back up to get to the pickup. So we're going to get down next to the river and formulate a plan for how to get Chip and the sheep out of here and get ourselves out of here. We're thinking we might just walk down the river. Don't know yet. Hardest part, seeing where the hell your feet are. <laughs> yeah, not knowing what the hell's even in front of you. Here we are. It's eight in the morning. Uh, we finally got back off the mountain. Uh, we shot this ram about uh, three o'clock yesterday, and. Uh, 
Turned out to be in a little tougher spot than we expected. Spent the night out there, or I should say Chip spent the night out there. Tried to get up to the ram myself, but uh, I'm not a mountain goat, couldn't make it. But Chip went up, got the ram and the meat and brought it back last night. And so we got back here and we just ate breakfast. I guess it was supper and breakfast. And <laughs> so breakfast. here we are. We, we found the sheep about, uh, about I'd say, 1.30, 2 o'clock. Uh, we'd split up uh, into two groups looking for sheep. And uh, we found it, I think, from where we initially were. We were about six to 700 yards. Uh, the guide here, Chip, got us down to about a 300-yard shot. And uh, I had a Fierce Firearms CT Edge with a 7-millimeter uh, LRM long-range magnum. And uh, pretty sure the first shot was a kill, but because he was sitting on a ledge, I didn't take a chance. He started moving. I let him have it again, and I pretty well stopped him. Did, didn't want him to let, roll another 15 feet. No, another 15 <laughs> feet, and it would have been hundreds of feet. <laughs> Although, you. if he'd have gone off that last cliff there, then the pack out would have been a lot easier. <laughs> <just for> the <laughs>